Hello world. Right, well our great British Postage Service is now back on track and I have today received a few parcels of which one of them is the diesel loco that I've been waiting for to do Great British Diesels Part 2. So whoopee, I've got that now. So I'll get onto that maybe later today or tomorrow or as soon as I can. But also arriving today is this. Bum, bum, bum. Yes, the uh, R965 Triangle controller. Um, don't want the transformer, so we'll get rid of that. Yes, there we go. The controller, uh, one of two that I won on eBay a few days ago, and uh, now one of them's here. And not only can I modify this my own way uh, and fit it to the layout for the third main line, which I'm looking forward to doing, but also I can video me doing the mod to show you how it's done as promised. So, as I said in the uh, video uh, showing you how I'd fitted these two of these to the layout, um, you may remember I mentioned that these are actually riveted. You can see we've got the rivets there. So I'm going to first of all draw those four rivets out and then I'll be back to you with the next part of the modification. Right, okay, I'm back. Um, I've drilled out the four rivets in the four corners. At no point in showing you how to draw rivets out. Very simple. Um, obviously, just you a drill. Simple as that. Now, I will point something out to you here. If any of you youngsters feel like you have the confidence and the ability to do this modification on these controllers, please do not use a drill without the permission or supervision of your parents because drills can be dangerous. So let's not have any accidents, okay? Get the help of a parent. Right. Now, once you've drilled these out, um, obviously the base is going to come off. Now, before I take the base off and show you, I'm going to explain something to you. A little bit of a setback, only a small one, about doing these. Right, when I did the two that I had hanging around and I'd never used, when I did them uh, two or three weeks ago and put them onto my layout, the results were outstanding. Um, but you may remember on the video in question that I'd said that I got two more that had one on eBay and once I get those I'll dock to both of those which gives me one for my third line um, and then it gives me a spare one to add another line later in time or control lights or whatever. Um, but when I got them and I drilled the rivets out and I opened them up I had a surprise. The thing is, I didn't know until this point, there's two different circuits in these. And the later circuit is nowhere near as good as this older circuit. Um, and you can't doctor it in the same way as you can do with these. Now I'll tell you a way of knowing that you've got one which you can doctor. First of all, it's got to say there, made in England, not made in China. It has to be the made in England one. Not that there's anything wrong with the China ones, but they're the ones which have got the later circuit in and we can't mod them as easily and as good as we can this one, this type. Now, I have also found out that some of the Made in England ones did also have the modified circuit, or shall we say the later circuit, it's not modified, it's actually cheaply, more cheaply done. And the way you can find out is simply this, Made in England and a date of, in this case, you can see that, I'm upside down to the camera, yes I bet I am. Right, date is 94, okay? 4th of the 3rd, 94. Now, from what I've found out about these now, the original circuit, this better circuit for this modification, they are made before 95. So if your controller's got a date of 96 onwards underneath, then you're not going to be able to do this modification. So a little bit of a setback, but it's not going to apply to everybody. In fact, there is something I can do to the later circuit. Um, like I say, I can make them about 50% better again. But with these, I can go much more than that. And so now we'll simply take her apart. First of all, we'll take the base off. So we'll just turn it over. Um, it's very simple to get off usually, you just have to get your nails under it a little bit here and there, just prise it all open. There we go, that's the base off of it, okay, and there's the circuit board inside. Now, to get the circuit board out, again, it's very simple, but we turn it over, we just remove the knob, which <clears throat> pulls off, they are a bit tight sometimes, so just get a, bit, a little, little bit of a help underneath, like so, get the knob off, there we go, put that somewhere safe. Right. and you'll see that there is a nut there on that so we'll just remove that as well just take the nut off very simple to do okay put that out of the way and there's a washer uh, shape proof washer on here which, again you need to get your nails under it right I've got that shape proof washer no, no big deal right we need to remove these knurled nuts here 
And there's one. Ba -ba 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 -bum. And the other one. <laughs> now, I don't know why, but this, they've usually got two more nuts underneath there. And I don't know where, the, where this pair's gone. It must have been like that when I got it. But uh, no, no big deal, anyway. If you've got two nuts on there, take those off as well. Right, now the circuit board and everything should all come out in one go. They can be a bit sticky to get out. You have to gently prise the power socket down as well and push on those terminals, pull it with this wire, whatever way, press it in and any way you can get it out. They just sometimes jam. Right, this is out. Right, now, there's the circuit board. Now, I'm not going to baffle you with lots and lots of technical jargon because I want to make this so simple that any of you out there can do this. Right, first of all, I'll just explain to you how it works It's in very simple terms. Let's just try and zoom in a little bit more if we can. Oh, try the white. Whoops, yeah, back a bit. Right, okay, it's in very simple terms. This is the control which turns the speed up and down, obviously. This thing here is a chip. It's a 16 leg chip which controls everything. And that chip controls this transistor here, which is mounted flat down on the board. And on top of it, glued to it, we've got there a heat sensor. Now, the way it works is quite simply, the control controls that chip, the chip controls that transistor, which controls the output up this pair of wires to your track obviously with the reverse switch but that's not relevant to anything so that's the very simple way that it works now what we're going to do first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this pair of wires and the reason why because these wires which is the output wire which goes to your track this wire is cheap thin nasty and will probably manage about one amp if you're lucky um, in fact, I do even think the power supply will give you one amp. The average modern day locomotive draws about two to three hundred milliamps. So we're talking 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of an amp. Um, so yeah, this wire is okay for, for that sort of thing. But we're going to be pulling a, well, considerably more current. Probably up in the region of two and a half, three amps off of this. And this wire has got to go. Now on the board here, it's marked output for the wire. So really, quite simply, we're going to turn it over. Um, and this here is called, that there, is called uh, a desoldering tool or solder sucker, some people call it and very handy for obviously sucking off old solder so we're going to get a little bit of solder on the iron see in the tip, get a bit of solder ready oh it's wrapped itself up, right, okay bit of solder on the iron, always works to get things going right, we're just going to suck these two connections off here so, there's one and there's the other. And we're going to just oh, to warm it up again. Sometimes it doesn't all come off. Right, there we go. So now we're taking the wire off. Now we know from obviously just removing the wire that those two connections there are our output connections. So we're going to change something here. Where the input comes in on that plug at the end, we're going to we're going to put wires on here. We're not going to use the original transformer. We're going to put some heavy duty cable on here. You'll note that these two go straight round like that, and one of them goes to that outlet, and then the other one, this one here, goes all the way round there, and that goes to the other outlet there. Well, I'm going to use these outlets because they're beefy. I'm going to use those for our output to the track. But in order to do that, I have got to break the circuit board there. And there, sorry, not break the circuit board, but break the track, because I don't want it connected to the input. So I'm going to break this. I'm going to break the track on there and there. So these are now isolated, and I can resolder to them for our main outputs to the track. And a simple way to do that is a um, pair of cutters. You can use a Stanley knife blade if you want, or something sharp. But again, be careful. We don't want any accidents. But what I normally do with them is I just gouge it across like that with the cutters just so I can break that bit of track there so it's not connected to the one that goes around to the input socket so just double sure, it doesn't matter if you break a bit of the board away anyway um, try and turn it around and do the other one I'll try and keep it in the camera for you okay, uh, the same again, just gouge it all out we've got a, a, we just need a very good disconnection between that and the input so a little bit more there like that, yeah, it's got it away now. It's going, it's going, yep. Right, so I've now isolate those, isolated those two terminals because, we're, like I say, we're going to use them for our main powerful outlet to the track. Now, what I'm going to have to do now, because we've removed 
the original output lead which was on these two connections here I'm just going to put some wire jumpers across to there and to there for our new output so I'll do that and I'll be back with you in a few seconds so now I put the two links on between the original output wire connections which were there and I've obviously linked them now with good quality heavy duty wire one red one black not that you have to bother colouring it but just for correctness um, and as you can see I've soldered them onto these two pads for our main outputs which are now on the two screws on the top which we can now put nice beefy wire on to our track um, simple it is really simplicity just the two wires straight onto there I'll hold it up try and get it a bit closer for you to have a look and you'll see how it's done so there's the two wires onto the output connectors so that's really really simple to do that right next thing we're going to do is we're going to do away with this horrible plug we're not going to be using the original transformer we don't want this plug on the side we want some proper heavy duty cable on there so what we're going to do now is quite simply remove the solder now there's three connections but only only two of them are doing something which is that one and that one this one's just a, a curing point but you've got to take it all off to get the socket off so we just warm that up and solder off that one and the same again warm that one up get that solder off and the same again put a bit of solder on the iron again you're always better to put a little bit of solder on because it, it flows everything better so we'll just take that one off as well like that uh, didn't quite all come off try again Okay, get the socket off now. Prise it off gently. If the legs are coming. There we go. Trying to get it off. Still a bit, still a bit of solder hanging onto it. Sometimes it's easy just to take it off by hand, like so. Let me do it. Oh, come on. Today. It's loose, it's loose, but it's not coming off. Oh. Right, that's one leg out, two legs out. Oh, come on. I think it's twisted in the board, actually. Let's have a look. Yes, it's got a twist in it. We'll get it. We'll get it. That's it, we got it. Right, so you can get rid of that, throw it away. Right, so that's with that taken off. We just put some solder on those. You can forget that one because that one's, like I say, only an anchorage point, but we'll just make it look tidy. But we just put a bit of solder back onto those, like that. And I'm going to put some wires through the holes, but I'm going to suck them all out again in a minute. But I want to do it nice and neat. The best thing to do is always to put some solder on if you're going to suck them off again, because you get a better suction when the solder's flowing. So keep going to get it off like that. And again like that now we've got a couple of clean holes to get the angle right for you if you can see that we've got holes right through there now so yeah hang on put that down yeah those holes are right through cleaned out there and there right okay right back in a few seconds now as you can see where our normal input socket was here those, those two connections there are the only two that count as I say this is only a, an anchorage point at the top you don't need to worry about that one right I've now soldered a piece of really good quality beefy red and white heavy duty cable there and it's pretty simple I've just pushed them through the hole or through the holes and soldered them and just you know be careful that you haven't got a, a couple of strands strands uh, short in here you must make sure that that is clean and it's nice and separate so that's that done uh, we've got now we've done that we've got our input our new input cable this is what's going to come from your battery charger from your dad's battery charger or your own if you've got one of your own um, so we've got the input done now to heavy duty cable we've got the output done heavy duty cable to these two posts which we've disconnected from the two lines of track running around the top and the bottom of the circuit board by scouring them away and that's our output that's our input so now we're going to do the big part of the mod right and it's this is what it is first of all this transistor here is the one that's carrying all the current when the when the when the, the unit is being used now this thing on the top here is a temperature sensor and what we're going to do we're going to, probably going to break it i'm going to literally try and get that off i'm going to try it yes like that now 
let me explain to you that's a temperature switch I'll explain to you without going into technical details how this works this is a transistor it's called a BD135 there's nothing special about it at all it's a transistor there and its power rating is 1.5 amps uh, now under normal circumstances that would be pretty good but the thing is with all transistors they are down rated if you don't have a heat sink and this has obviously got no heat sink on it in other words it's in free air and you have to down rate it by about two thirds so you're looking at probably half an amp before it starts to get over hot now what happens is this temperature sensor which is glued to it obviously t senses that temperature and if this transistor starts to get hotter than you know pretty much half an amp of uh, current being pulled through it this t switch opens up and shuts the controller down which we don't want it to be doing so first thing we're going to do is do away with this this thermal switch if you break it don't worry about it i'm going to take that out and i'm going to literally solder a link across there so we're going to turn it over and i know exactly where it is so we'll get the desoldering tool again and we're just going to warm it up like so get one leg off same again with the other leg when it decides to go yep that one i'm going to try take it out by hand it's all it's quite often a lot easier actually so right there's one leg gone and there's the other leg gone so there's the temperature sensor and you can now throw that in the bin another load of rubbish another waste of time so we throw that in the bin i'm going to clean these holes out again I'll put a little bit of wire across there so i think one's okay one's all right let's clean the other one out like so yep lovely that's so now i'm going to get a bit of wire find a piece yep I should have put that ready, shouldn't I? Never mind. Right, just a bit of wire. A bit of 5 amp fuse wire will do it if you haven't got anything. A bit of stranded wire like that. So I'm just going to literally put that in the hole. Like so. Like that. You can push it down. Okay. And I'm going to solder it into place. Like. There. And there. Like that. And then we're going to snip off the surplus, like there and there. That's it. And we've now replaced the thermal switch with a wire link. So that's now not going to switch off unnecessarily uh, because we're going to beef it up so much you're not going to need that sensor in there. Right. Now, going back to the transistor, this one here, that's the BD135. Now, without again going into technical terms but i have to just tell you it's marked on the board it's got an e a c and a b which stands for emitter collector base okay simple enough emitter collector base so we're going to take this transistor out and we notice that that's the front okay so we've got uh let's have a look on my right on your right that leg there that first leg is the base okay so we're going to take this out again i'm just going to suck the solder off one leg like that didn't quite go a bit more and the second one so sometimes putting a bit of solder on actually helps get it back off again quicker but Be and better two and the middle one i'm not really bothered if i damage this transistor because we're replacing it anyway there's nothing special about one of these so i'll try and get the legs out now go it's getting a bit hot right it's getting too hot. Oh. Okay. One. Oh, it's getting too hot. Can't hold it. Right. I'm just going to stop the camera and I'm going to take it out first because it's uh, it's been a pain in the bum. Okay. I'm sorry about that. It was giving me a little bit of jip getting it out, but I've I've done it now and I've cleaned everything up. Right. Now, that's the transistor there that we've just taken out. Now, as you can see, that's the front. And like I said to you, it was obviously in that way round, facing forward. And on the board, it clearly states that we've got base, collector, emitter. Collector's in the middle. Right, now this transistor we don't want, so that's going in the bin. 
and we're replacing it with this one which you I'll just get that back actually because you'll see the difference in the size much much bigger obviously physical things aren't always necessarily beefier but in the case of a lot of transistors they are now this is nothing special about this one either it's quite a common transistor it's a BD11 so BD11 okay now this like like the original one uh, wherever it's gone like the original one with a proper heat sink will be capable of one and a half amps without a heat sink as it was used here it's capable of about half an amp now this one without a heat sink is capable of about one and a half amps which is pretty much the same as that one with the heat sink on it but with a heat sink five amps now that is considerably more and this is what's going to do all the hard work now the other thing is if we were to put it in forwards like that as in where the other one came out it would be wrong and it's quite simply this the BD911 the base and the emitter which are the outer two legs are the opposite way round so we have to turn it round a full 180 and put it in that way because the base is this side on that transistor so it's not hard to get to, to, to understand this you don't necessarily have to have any technical knowledge but in a simple term we don't put it in facing the same way as the other one we turn it a full 180 and put it in backwards and it's correct okay so I'm now going to get the heat sink I'm going to show you how I go about this first of all I'm going to solder three wires into the three holes where the transistor was because I'm going to extend them and put them onto this transistor on a heat sink on this big unused space here and so now as you can see here I have actually soldered three wires onto the three connections where the transistor was originally and the reason we put these fly leads on is because obviously the new transistor is not going straight in the board it's going to be mounted at the side here on a heat sink um, and so we need to extend the legs as simple as that so I've left them long for now till I'm ready to do it so what we're going to do now is show you a heat sink now that is an aluminium heat sink I've got a few of these lined second hand ones lying around from old power supplies and whatever um, just different types and different sizes and to be honest with you it doesn't really matter I mean you'll get these sort of things from Maplin's uh, you'll get the BD11 transistor from Maplin's probably or online I mean it, it, there's nothing nothing special about them um, it's an NPN transistor by the way uh, so if you go for an equivalent or if somebody advises you on an equivalent it's an NPN it needs to be about uh, 50 volts no less than 50 volts 50 volts or more at 5 amps MPN pretty standard transistor right so I actually happen to have a few of these heat sinks and I've already used three of these in those other controllers as I've already converted and I'll, quite simply doesn't matter what you use but the bigger the better and as big as you can to get get it inside that space there so as long as it fits in there then fine so what I'm going to do now stand up to do this so I can see what I'm doing I don't want this heat sink to touch the side of this capacitor although it is insulated but this heat sink is going to get warm so I'm just going to centralize it with my fingers nice and easy like that just slightly away from the cap there now this might get in the way of the camera but it doesn't matter I'm now just going to drill my hole straight through the board like that okay move that so I've got my hole and hopefully it's not gone through that piece of track you must be careful you don't go through that piece of track it's very very important that the heat sink itself because we're going to bolt the transistor straight onto this heat sink you'll see the back of the transistor is metal there and normally if a heat sink is going to be bolted to a metal chassis or any other sort of, sort of connections you have to insulate the back of the transistor from the heat sink but in this case we don't need to because the heat sink is going to be mounted on a piece of Paxilin board and it's not going to be connecting to anything underneath there so you must be aware that that's not got to touch anything at all so there we go so I'll get some hardware nuts some bolts and I'll be back with you in a few more seconds okay well I'm back with the hardware we're ready to do the final touches before we do just get the transistor and I'm just going to very carefully bend all three legs at a full 90 degrees upright like that okay just uh, 
there's a reason for doing that right okay you can see what I've done there right now like I said because this heatsink is not connected to anything metal or any circuitry anywhere we don't need to insulate the transistor from the heatsink we don't need to insulate this metal part but what we do need to do is use some heat compound transfer paste which again you'll get from maplins or whatever and you need about the size of a a match head probably a little bit of an overkill there but you see you'll buy that from maplins it's a you know silicon heat transfer compound right so what we'll do put that down we're going to remove that put the screw in through the back like so through the heat sink as well and you'll note that again the screw is not touching the circuitry here so that means we're well insulated right okay we're now going to try and hold, hold the whole thing in place we're going to place the transistor on like so like that and then we put the nut on it like so and wind it down you could actually put a, a locking washer on this if you want but it's not um, it's not the sort of thing that's um, uh, it's not going to come undone it's not the sort of thing that's going to be uh, you know sort of like subject to loads of vibration for want of a better word so okay we're going to tighten that up now just grab that and just turn it up a little bit first get everything lined up Ba bum right just tight straighten everything up like so you see the compound is oozed out from underneath now so we'll get a proper screwdriver on it and just tighten her up fully like so I might have to hold that I think it's trying to go around on me but yep I'll hold that and we'll tighten it tight there we go heat sink on all sorted lovely jubbly right I'm going to just have a little break for a cup of tea um, and then I'm going to uh, wire it up the last three wires up and uh, put it back to bed so back in a few seconds hello everybody we're very nearly at the end of, uh, of the modification and we're about ready to put it back in the box uh, before we do just point out to you that what I've done as you may remember a little earlier we bent the legs of the new BD11 transistor to a 90 degree upward angle just makes them easier to work with I then chopped them off I didn't show you that but I've chopped them off at around about two or three mil in height um, and then the three fly leads that we had I've soldered them onto the transistor there so hopefully you can see that all soldered on neat and tidy so basically we've just extended the legs of the transistor and allowed us to put it out the way on this heatsink there now um, I will give you a recap but by the way first of all the colors of these are not critical you could use all three the same color as long as you follow the pattern that I've done there and put the particular wire in the particular place on there to give you the example we know that the original transistor looking from the front which is that way the base was on the right but looking for the front on the new transistor we know the base is on the left hence the grey wire is going to the left the middle stays the same and then obviously the emitter wire goes to the right whereas before it was on the left so very simple to do it's not a hard modification if you know how to solder it's really easy to do um, and the results are absolutely outstanding so we'll, I'll do a recap for you right first of all the first thing we did we removed the original output lead from there the crap bit of cable which you can throw in the bin then what we did next we broke the track that feeds that terminal and that terminal there we broke the track away from these two outer pieces there because we wanted to use these for our output now instead of having a permanent wire fixed to it and of course we can put heavy duty cable on but to get the output to there we soldered that black wire from there to there and from there to there which is the two output holes basically we've moved them to there and removed the extension cable that was on there okay so that's the second thing then what we did we removed the thermal sensor there and we put a wire link in its place very simple to do then we removed the input socket here the plug socket from the side and we replaced that by soldering some heavy duty cable straight into it now I will point out to you doesn't matter which way around you do these I've only used red and black for correctness it looks better but in actual fact the original input would have been AC from the wall plug transformer 
um, and the input we're putting into it now from a battery charger, a car battery charger, is DC. But it doesn't matter that you put these either way round because on the board here, these four diodes convert the original AC to DC. But because we're putting a DC signal in, these diodes are still going to polarize the whole thing. So it doesn't matter which way round you put those two wires. So therein, bear in mind, it goes to that one and that one and this one is only used as an anchorage point for the original socket you don't need to use that for anything okay then what we've done we've removed the original transistor which is the BD135 and we've replaced that with three fly leads which we've left long until we're ready then we've got the new transistor we've got a heat sink of which um, you'll get from like I say Maplins or anywhere like that now bear in mind these heat sinks if you've got any old computer power supplies they always have a good heat sink in them somewhere usually usually some that look a bit like that but um, say if you go in and buy one but anyway the most substantial size heat sink you can get into that compartment is what you want to be putting in it now when we drill the hole to mount the heat sink we need to make sure that it doesn't touch the circuitry there so it's nice and clear just there okay and then obviously uh, we put some thermal paste under the transistor about the size of a match head um, it's fine then you tighten it down nice and tight it obviously align everything make it look tidy and then we simply solder the three wires onto there with the base to the top left obviously the connector is in the middle as before and the emitter is now on the top right which is there so and that's it and now we're going to put it back in the case and one other thing that I have done which you don't have to do but I'm a bit of a stickler for perfection is we put a, a grommet on the power cable there and just bend it into shape like that because we're going to slide it up the uh, up the cover and I'll show you how to do that now so we'll get hold of the whole unit she's all finished and ready to put back together oh don't forget to put that back on it slips off because they always fall off that's your direction switch the red bit it doesn't have to be on but i suppose it looks better with it on right so we'll get the cover and we'll just carefully turn that over making sure we don't lose the red bit again align the grommet with the slot like that that originally was the uh, the socket the input socket gently push it all into place carefully like so this is all gone back into place you'll see there now the grommet has gone nice and square that's all solid now okay and then we'll put that put back on her the uh, shake proof washer there and then the nut now this is a plastic thread on these controls so make sure you don't cross thread it if it doesn't go on with your fingers like that you've got a problem you've cross threaded it the nuts are metal but the actual shaft is plastic and it's very easy to cross thread them so all we need to do now is just give that a little bit of a nip up like so then we can put the uh, knob back on like mm -hmm. so there they are, knob back on now as I told you the nuts were missing off this one so I pinched some off another, off another one I've got I've got plenty of these in stock anyway and you need to just put these nuts on they should be there on top come on today they should be there underneath the ones that you use for putting the wires on I've just had this on once it's because I'm working with my left hand and I'm backwards because of the camera I'm much better with my other hand on this right where's the other nut on there it is all right and um, oops one again oh I'm so much better with my right hand right put that on now these don't want ranging down really tight they just want to be secure so I'm just going to not spin them not with that one I'm not wrong one try that one okay have we got that one there yeah just not spin them very carefully just till the firm that's all I got it all you got to do is just till the firm no loads of pressure not necessary so there she is all back in place okay uh, now this is our output to the track but remember the cable that you use for the output to the track it's got to be of this sort of quality and this sort of size don't put that stupid thin little wire back on again because you're not going to get the power to the track so and there's the two canelled nuts which you can obviously put back on like so okay just make sure the 
which is working fine yep yeah. um, these outputs to the track by the way doesn't matter which way around you do those because when you put the switch in the forward position if the train goes the wrong way just turn them around and then it'll be the right way around dead simple no big deal right so there she is all put back together now uh, the only thing that we haven't done is the bottom you have to push that down just to get that grommet to squeeze up a little bit like that now because that screw there is where it is you'll note you've got this piece here look on the bottom and it catches right on that screw um, and that screw of course depends on what heat sink you guys put in it could not force to actually be in that position but in the case of that particular heat sink I've used it falls exactly on that screw so what all I'm doing quite simply is around about the middle I just slip it like that and then the same again like that you can see that and then I'm just going to bend that down hopefully you said tougher than you think and bend that down out the way like so maybe a bit more oh. and it, I'll get there in a minute get it down and out the way yep that's better just push it down out the way like that um, and I know that it's going to sit across that screw and now we can put that in properly and you'll see that that goes up there where it was before hopefully in place bang she's clicked in and she's fully shut perfect look cord grips there perfect grommet perfect and yep she's finished and that's our output to the track the only other thing that i need to point out to you the length of this wire you put on the input is entirely up to yourselves i mean i've just put probably a foot maybe about a, just over a foot on that because the thing is you are now going to connect this to a car battery charger now you don't have to worry about fusing and thermal sensors and heat sensors now because all car battery chargers are fused so your safety safety net will be there with this uh, so I'll just go and get the charger now this is just an old battery charger that I've sort of made myself years ago so nothing special about it it's just a, a car battery charger and if you look at the output connectors which are pretty much the same as any car battery charger you've got these now these way are going to go to your input wires so literally you're, you're going to do sort of clamp that on there and you're going to clamp that one on that one um, but what you must do is you need to take these up once you've got the wire on there you need to take them up um, to make sure that these don't short together obviously uh, for safety purposes but as I say all battery charges are fused anyway um, your other option is you could if you really wanted to you could actually solder some crop clips like that onto the end of these wires and then of course they would they would quite easily sort of just clip on like that again but tape it up but your bog standard car battery charge is going to be at three four five amps and you're going to be quite easily able with this modified controller to run now it will run up to 10 locomotives but i highly recommend you don't go above six because the heat sink's going to get hot and the heat's going to get out and the top of this will get quite hot doesn't matter providing you don't overdo it but six five six locomotives you will be able to control really really well very very slow uh, great dc crawl um perfect for the job and in my next video i'm going to be running 15 locomotives from these so you'll see you in the next video hope you enjoyed that dead easy to follow take good care of yourselves bye everybody bye